Every year, over 10 million people are killed or hospitalised because of traumatic brain injury. Road traffic crashes are one of the main causes of brain injury. All efforts should go into preventing crashes happening in the first place, but in addition, we need to find better treatments to improve survival and reduce disability. The CRASH-3 trial will provide reliable evidence about the effect of tranexamic acid on mortality and disability in patients with traumatic brain injury and other complications. The CRASH-3 trial main coordinating centre is at the Clinical Trials Unit of the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. You may also have contact with your own local coordinating groups. The purpose of this training video is to outline the procedures of the trial. This film lasts for approximately 15 minutes. Please make sure that everyone involved in the trial in your hospital will have an opportunity to view this video first before the trial starts in your hospital and at any time afterwards to refresh. Please also make the DVD available to any new members who join your team after the trial has started. After viewing, if you still have any questions, please contact the Coordinating Centre. When your hospital is ready to start the trial, you will receive a starter pack of materials. One of the wall posters is for you to display where the patient's family members will have the opportunity to read it. The other one details the outline of the trial and the randomization process for the trial team. Your investigator's study file contains all of the forms, information and guidance you need for conducting the trial. Spare copies of the patient information sheets and consent forms translated into the language of your country are also included. Please use the presentation provided on the CD to train your trial team. A GCP training program is available via the collaborator's intranet on the trial website. Initially, you will receive one drug box containing eight individual patient treatment packs and eight 100 milliliter bags of normal saline to be used with a loading dose. With the drug box, you will also receive a pack containing entry forms, outcome forms, patient information sheets, consent forms, alert cards, brief information leaflets and label sheets to help you record the trial entry in the patient's medical records. We ask you to confirm the receipt of every drug box to the coordinating centre using the drug accountability log. When you start randomising patients, we will monitor your drug stock every day and will automatically send you new supplies before all of the packs have been used. It is very important that you send the patient entry form data to the coordinating centre as soon as possible after randomization, as this is the only way for us to know when you have used a pack. Remember to list all of the team members with trial responsibilities on the delegation log. Please let us know if you need any more of any of the trial materials or if there's anything specific that would make the trial easier for you. The family information posters should be displayed in the waiting rooms where the patient's family members have the opportunity to see them and learn about the trial. Brief information leaflets can also be used to provide information to the family and friends and if your hospital procedure requires, the family members can sign the leaflet to indicate their agreement for the patient to be entered into the trial. Please note, this is not an informed consent. When a patient has been diagnosed with traumatic brain injury, he or she should receive all standard treatment for this as per your hospital protocol. The entry form is completed from the patient's medical notes to assess eligibility. A patient is eligible if he or she is adult. This may be 16 years or older in some countries and 18 years and older in others. Within 8 hours of brain injury has intracranial bleeding on CT scan or has a Glasgow coma score of 12 or less, has no significant extracranial bleeding needing immediate blood transfusion and there is no indication or contraindication to tranexamic acid. Remember that eligible patients will have an impaired mental capacity evidenced by a reduction in their GCS or bleeding present on a brain CT scan. Therefore, they will be unable to consent for themselves. However, 
randomization needs to be done as soon as possible after injury. If no relative or other representative is present, two doctors, one with primary responsibility for the patient, can discuss and make a decision on whether the patient can be entered into the trial, taking into account also any of the patient's known views about research participation. Please remember to record on the patient's medical notes how the decision to randomise was made. If a relative or other representative is present, information should be given using the brief information leaflet as a guide. If there is no objection, randomise the patient. Please note that no objection does not mean a fully informed consent. As representatives are likely to be distressed and they will not have had adequate time to consider the information carefully to make a valid judgment, any decisions made under these circumstances might be viewed as not fully informed consent. Therefore, as much information as possible should be given and only if there is no objection the patient should be randomised. You can see the randomisation process on your wall posters and pocket cards. Full signed informed consent must be obtained as soon as practical from either the patient if he or she regains capacity or the representative. You should have all necessary documents to hand, the brief information leaflet, information sheet for patient and representative and the consent form. Treatment packs must be used in strict numerical order with the lowest available number first. Please use all packs in one box before starting a new box. Before using, please check that all the four ampules are intact. All treatments must be prescribed. The loading dose should be administered by intravenous infusion over approximately 10 minutes as soon as possible after randomization. To confirm that the treatment has been given, use the labels provided to record this. The maintenance dose should be started immediately after the loading dose has been given, added to 500 milliliters of any isotonic intravenous solution and infused at over 120 milligrams per hour or 60 milliliters per hour for about eight hours. We suggest that you prepare both the loading and maintenance doses at the same time to save time. There are some yellow peelable randomization stickers on the lid of the treatment box and you have also received sheets of blue peelable labels. There are several places where these labels should be used including the medical records and infusion bags. Please complete the details on these labels and use them to ensure that information required for the trial is fully documented in the patient's medical records. The outcome form should be completed from patient notes at discharge, death or 28 days, whichever is earlier. At discharge, the patient should be given an alert card and advised to carry it with them for four weeks. If at any point during the four weeks following randomization the patient is readmitted to hospital, he or she should show the card so that the principal investigator can be notified. Most of the untoward medical events which happen in hospital are captured on the outcome form. If you want to report an event not on the outcome form, or if any untoward event occurs after discharge, you will need to complete an adverse event form. You should identify a person responsible for data collection and submission. You can enter the data from entry and outcome forms directly into the trial database. As a last resort, forms can also be emailed or faxed to the coordinating centre. Guidance on how to complete the forms and how to send data is included in the study file. The data must be sent as soon as possible after its due date. The investigator's study file consists of two folders. Please familiarise yourself with their contents and pay attention to the guidance sheet in front of folder 1. Certain logs need to be kept up to date throughout the trial, such as the delegation log, randomization log and drug accountability log. 
All patients considered for the trial but not randomised must be recorded on the screening log. All original completed entry forms, outcome forms, adverse event forms and signed consent forms must be filed in the appropriate sections in the study file. Documents relating to drug shipments must also be kept in the study file. All trial documentation needs to be archived at your hospital for at least five years after the end of the trial. Do not destroy the study file until advised by the coordinating centre. You can access a secure intranet site for collaborators by a username and password available by emailing crash at lshtm.ac.uk. Via the intranet you can complete the GCP training and download training presentations. Also, patient information sheets in the languages spoken in your country are available on the intranet. If you need further information about any of the trial procedures, please contact the Trial Coordinating Centre. If you need advice about reporting an adverse event or unblinding a patient, you can call the 24-hour emergency number. All the contact details are readily available on the randomization posters, pocket cards and the study file. Regular updates are available on the trial website crash3.lshtm.ac.uk. The success of the trial will be dependent entirely upon the collaboration of nurses and doctors in the participating hospitals and those who hold key responsibilities for the trial. The team at the Coordinating Centre and your own national coordinating team are here to help you with any trial related matters and will keep in contact with you throughout the trial. Research such as the CRASH-3 trial would not be possible without families and other representatives agreeing to take part under very difficult circumstances. Without them, it would be impossible to find better ways to care for trauma patients. Our patients and their families should take comfort in knowing that we are constantly monitoring the safety of all of our participants. If patients or their families would like a copy of the results of this trial when it is completed, please let your doctor know or contact us directly.